I'm Karen Liu. I am an associate professor in the computer science department at Stanford University. I'm part of the team that builds intelligent exoskeleton for fall prevention. Locomotion might not seem to be a big deal for many of us, but it could be a very dangerous activity for older adults or people with motor impairments. So according to CDC, um, one in three older adults fall every year, and the fall death rate has increased by 30% in the last 10 years. So if this trend continues, we're looking at seven fall deaths every hour by 2030. So the goal of our projects is to stop this healthcare crisis before it's too late. So older adults and people with uh, physical disabilities can have a better quality of life. So our approach uh, was originated from the rather silly idea. So I was thinking it would be great if I can send a robot to follow my mom around. She is uh, in the aging population, and it would be great if, a, if the robot can catch her before she falls. And then I thought about my colleague Steve Collins and his exoskeleton, because the exoskeleton is already a really great technology. It's, it turns the robot into a wearable device so that you know, the robot can sense the environment for her and give her assistance when she needs it. I'm Steve Collins. I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering at Stanford University, and I'm part of a team of researchers that are developing intelligent exoskeletons to enhance people's mobility. So when people hear the term exoskeleton, they often picture Iron Man. We have something a little more modest in mind, kind of like uh, intelligent actuated clothing that might guide our legs when we're about to make a, a misstep or help us to recover if we start to lose our balance. When people think about the challenges in designing exoskeletons like that, they might think that it's all about clever mechanical design or better power sources, but really the big challenge is in the human. People are incredibly complex, and this makes it really difficult to predict how a person will respond to some new device that we give them. The differences between individuals mean that something that's really effective for one person might actually make walking harder for another person. So we need ways to model individual users so that we can design the devices that are going to be most effective for them and adapt as they learn and grow. So Steve told me that the hardest part of exoskeleton design is to have a model that can predict humans' response to the devices. And so I say, well, let's just say, you know, frame it as an AI problem, a machine learning problem. But the first problem is that we don't have data. This is not like images or text. We have almost no data. The worst part is that we don't even have a, a, a tools to collect data. So we have to build everything from scratch, both software and hardware. So we build a system, a uh, perturbation emulator. It allows us to program the perturbation so we can capture a wide range of a perturbation. And this way we can safely induce falls in our lab and that this way we can collect a lot of data. Once we have the data, then we can really start solving the AI problem. So even though we figure out how to collect data, and we'll quickly realize that's not enough data to train a machine learning model in the brute force way. We really have to leverage all the domain knowledge or expert knowledge we have, including biomechanics, physics, physiology, kinesiology, and robotics. In this way, the machine learning problem can become easier and more feasible. To solve big, challenging problems like this, we need an interdisciplinary team including strength in mechanical design, physiology, computer science, and medicine. And that's what this Hoffman grant has enabled. The goal of this research is to improve the quality of life. But of course, there's a lot of ethical concerns around research like this. We're building a very powerful and autonomous device that can move people around. So it's really, really important to have ethical conversation from the very beginning and at every step of the way uh, along the development of our research.
The long-term goal of this research project is to help older adults to be more independent, to stay in their home longer, to have a better quality of life. But a lot of the technology we develop along the way could be really useful and impactful for a wide range of research areas. So for example, the predictive human models we develop, the physics engines, the exoskeleton emulators, as well as the data set we created. All of these tools could be used by academia as well as by uh, industry uh, in different application domains. A lot of times we think about robotics and AI in the context of replacing human labor, but this is one context in which uh, these technologies can really help enhance human quality of life, help us to achieve our own goals. One of the ways we've seen great progress made in related fields is through the emergence of big training data sets from which you can learn models. We hope that as a part of this project, we will gather biomechanics training data that will enable us to learn models of how people respond to exoskeletons that will become these great design tools.